Do you anticipate that happening with Mexico? Uh, Mexico is, to be perfectly honest, really early in this process. Uh, the challenge we're seeing in Mexico right now is that the, uh, the air quotes, good cartel, the one that saw drugs as a business, is being broken up. If you remember El Chapo. That's the good cartel? Yeah. yeah. Remember El Chapo, Sinaloa cartel? Yeah. He thought of himself as a Korean conglomerate president. So it's like, we, we, we smuggle drugs. That's our business. You don't mess with things that mess with the business. So you don't trip the old lady. You don't steal her purse. You don't shoot at the cops. These are people who live where we operate. We want them to be on our side. So maybe even throw a party every once in a while. Uh, you focus on the business. We got El Chapo. We removed him from circulation. Uh, the guy who died or got captured yesterday was his son, one of the Los Chapitos. And uh, his cartel, as a result, is fracturing because his leadership's gone. The replacement cartel is Jalisco New Generation. They're led by a former Mexican uh, military officer who thinks that rather than don't shit where you sleep so that the people on your side, whenever you move into a town, you shoot it up. You do kick over the old lady. You do take her purse. You make the people scared of you. That's the point of this. Drug running is a side gig. We are here to be powerful. And drug running is just one of the ways we make that happen. And he has taken the fight to every cartel and the Mexican government. And they're in the process of trying to break into the United States. Break in in what? Economically? Yeah. El Chapo and the Sinaloa became the largest drug trafficking organization in America under the Obama administration. And one of the reasons our birth rate went down so far so fast is they basically either co-opted or killed uh, American gangs. So they killed the people who were doing the killing. Not a lot of Americans got killed after that. All of the other cartels control the access points to the United States, but Jalisco New Generation now is challenging every single one of them trying to break through. And if they do, and they bring their business acumen, if you will, north of the border, they're going to start killing white chicks named Sheila in Phoenix. And then we're going to have a very different conversation in this country about the drug war and about trade with Mexico. So what, what it, when you say that they've killed the gangs, like what, in what way? Because that is an interesting thing that you don't hear a lot about American gangs anymore. Well, that's because they're not there to the same degree. So the Sinaloa, they, they co-opted the Hispanic gangs, especially the Mexican gangs, because there wasn't a language barrier there. Uh, and they really targeted and gutted a lot of the African-American gangs. They took over drug smuggling and distribution from them to deny them income. And then they just shot a lot of people. And when did this take place? That happened during the, the 2000s. It was pretty much completed by the time we got to 2013. But we weren't really kind of, this, this narrative didn't really go around. This is not something that I've heard before. Well, yeah, look at the murder. But it's making yeah. sense yeah, when look you're at saying the, it. Look at the violent crime rates in the United States. They've been trending down really significantly since about 2004. And the drop from 2004 to roughly 2014 was amazing. That's largely Sinaloa. So they have silently sort of invaded and taken mm -hmm. over the distribution and taken over the gang activities. Right. And this is El Chapo's cartel that is now getting broken up. And as soon as you have more players, more violence is going to happen, especially against one another. And that's one of the reasons that the murder rate in Mexico has skyrocketed in the last three years. Do you know who um, Ed Calderon, do you know, have you ever followed Ed Manifesto on I Instagram? He's, uh, he used to work for the government in Mexico and, you know, to, to fight off the cartels. And now he's made his way to America and he just does a great job of highlighting all this stuff. But one of the things he was showing is they were using 50 caliber rifles to try to shoot down planes yesterday. Yeah. Have you seen that? I have. I mean, what the fuck is going on over there? I mean, it, it seems like we concentrate so much on these conflicts that are happening all around the world, and there's a massive one mm -hmm. happening in a place where we could walk to. It's the disintegration of the Sinaloa cartel. So uh, back in 2019, the, the Los Chapitos, I can't remember his name. I keep wanting to say Octavia, and that's not it because that's a girl's name. Anyway, it begins with an O. Uh, he was captured in 2019, and they weren't able to get him out of town fast enough. So all of his homies basically got together with assault weapons and descended upon the police units that did it, and they were forced to let the guy go. Yeah, I remember that. This time, they were able to get him to the airport fast enough, and they, he's already in Mexico City. So there was a clash, but not nearly to the degree that we had so a couple years is, back. Look at this here. Oh, yeah. 
one of the things this is a guy shooting at airplanes which is fucking bonkers i mean what kind of airplanes are those are those those are probably civilian and why is he doing this we're seeing a change in heart of the administration in Mexico. Uh, Lopez Obrador, for the first couple of years of his presidency, followed what he called hugs, not drugs. The idea that if we don't bother the cartels, they'll just be nice. <laughs> yeah, so that didn't work out. Uh, and now he's taken a much more direct approach. And since most of the security services at the local level have been infiltrated by the cartels, he's tapped the military to do it. So the military is now taking active steps against the cartels. And if you are in a cartel, that means you need heavy re heavier weaponry to fight back. And that's why the 50 cals and things like them are starting to pop up a lot more. And so what is the Mexican strategy in terms of utilizing the military and, and dealing with the cartels? What are they, what are they trying to do? Uh, I would argue that the AMLO administration isn't to the point yet that they have a strategy, but they realize that the murder rate has reached the point that hugs, not drugs is no longer a viable option. And so they're trying to militarize the equation in the hopes that the Mexican military is more capable than this or that cartel. Uh, you can kind of break the cartel world into three groups. You've got Jalisco new generation, the hyper violent ones. You've got the uh, Los Chapitos and the associated groups that are what's left of Sinaloa, they're the most capable ones for smuggling drugs. That's where the money is. And so that is where AMLO seems to be focusing his efforts. And then you've got what's left of the Zetas and the Gulf cartels, which is a very twilight 2000 uh, dog eat dog world out in Eastern Mexico, which everyone's just kind of ignoring because it's not strategic, it's just violent. Uh, but it appears, and I don't want to oversell this because AMLO is clearly making this up as he goes. It appears that, that they think if they can put a pinch in the income, that maybe they can turn Sinaloa into the next Zetas and just break it apart. Uh, I don't think that's a very good plan, but it's better than what they've been doing for the last two and a half years. And what's worst case scenario with Mexico? Worst case scenario would be if Jalisco New Generation penetrates north of the border. And it changes our political discussion to be very anti-Mexico. One of the great achievements, in my opinion, of the Trump administration is convincing America's hard right that Mexicans are part of the family and taking one of the biggest looming racial issues in the United States and just dissolving it. If Americans start to think of Mexicans as drug runners again, regardless of why, that damages our most productive trading relationship and our most brilliant opportunity for our future right out of the gate.